Hello, can you hear me? Morning, our presenters and participants. Welcome Hello. to the Beauty Soul International Convention 2022. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to thank you so much for your participation and contribution to our annual convention success. I am Bu Thuy Ngoc An, as the presenter's moderator. I am delighted to see all of you in the lines of presence today, especially in this feature section. We do hope that all of you will be able to have some valuable knowledge and experience as takeaways following the talk. Before the presentation, there are a few considerations. In, in, ca in case you have any questions or concerns about the presentation, please feel free to leave them in the chat box so that we can gather the questions for easy response in the 5 to 10 minutes Q&A section. We gladly welcome Mr. Subhan Zen in this featured session, which is entitled um, Trends in English as a Subject in the Basic Education in Vietnam, research and policy recommendations. About our presenter, Mr. Sapan Zen is a doctor who is teaching at Australian National University. His referred publications include eight books published by outlets such as Drew Sledge and Springer, and his 39 articles and chapters have appeared in preferred journals such as Language Teaching, Journal of Education for Teaching, and Applied Linguists, Linguistics Review. He has been awarded Australia's Best Researcher in English Language and Literature. Uh, please welcome Mr. Subhan Zen. Hello, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yep. Hello, can you hear me well? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, we can, um, okay, can, can hear I... you. Hear you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, can I confirm whether you can see my screen? I have already sh shared my screen here. Can you see my screen? Yes, we, we can see your, your screen. Yes, we, we can. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon from Australia. I guess it is in the morning in Vietnam, and I hope it's a lovely day for all of you uh, to start this conference. My name is Subhan Zain. I'm based at Australia National University in Canberra, and I have done research for the British Council, um, which I would like to share with you. The, res the research focuses on English as a subject in basic education um, in ASEAN. And Vietnam is one of the key members of ASEAN. Um, so I would like to share with you the findings of my research, which I have gathered from participants in Vietnam. So the topic of my presentation is trends in English as a subject in basic education, SB in Vietnam, research and policy recommendations. I would like to thank the British Council for providing me with the research funding to be to enable me to conduct research for this study, as well as my employer, Australian National University. So now let's start with the presentation. Here's the overview of the presentation. There are a few aspects that I would like to discuss. The first one is that I would like to um, I would like to show you um, how Vietnam fares in terms of education and English proficiency measures. And then um, I would like to examine how SB works as an educational reform in Vietnam. And then the next part would be issues and challenges confronting the implementation SB policy. In other words, um, problems that are related to the implementation of English as a subject in basic education in Vietnam. And then the fourth part would be recommendations for research and policy. And then the last bit would be references. 
So the research has come from my books. These are the two books that have been written as a result of the research. The first one is English as a Subject in Basic Education, SP in ASEAN, a comparative study. And then the second one is Country Profiles, English as a Subject in Basic Education in Cambodia, Laos, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam, recommendations for policy and research. So the major um, contents of this presentation come mainly from the country profile of Vietnam, um, whereas um, all the findings related to Vietnam in comparison with other countries in ASEAN, um, which is the second book, um, which is in the second book, whereas um, the findings um, that are related to Vietnam in comparison to other, other ASEAN nations are written in the first book, which is the comparative study. If you are interested in the book, then you may download the books here for free, um, for free because the British Council has kindly provided access to everybody to download the book. So the conference organizer will be able to share the link with you after the presentation. So now let's move on to uh, the so first part of the presentation. Uh, Sapan, so, um, yes. sorry to interrupt you. Um, would you would you mind to move the microphone yes. close to um, your mouth a bit so we would, we can hear okay. you better? Yep. At the moment. Better. Uh, All right. Can you hear me moment. now? Is it better? Yeah, it's much better. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Much is, better. Is now. it better now? Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, let's move to the first part of the presentation, which is Vietnam in terms of education and English proficiency measures. Vietnam's in numbers. Vietnam is a country that um, has got a land area of one third of ki um, kilometers square. And then um, Vietnam's population has reached nearly 100 million people in 2021. Folk religions uh, make up the main beliefs of the Vietnamese people. The poverty rate of Vietnam um, is nearly 40% according to the latest statistics. So Vietnam, um, even though um, the poverty rate is still high, Vietnam has um, increased considerably in terms of attainment of the GDP because in 2017, its GDP, uh, PPP, or parity purchasing power, reached 8,041 US dollars. Um, Vietnam, um, the Viet and the Kim are the main ethnicity in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam's education statistics is um, shown below. Um, in here, as you can see, Vietnam didn't take part in the PISA. The latest PISA was organized in 2018. Education expenditure in Vietnam has also increased um, to the level of nearly 19%. In terms of education index, Vietnam is still struggling, however, however, because it only ranks 117th in the world or 7th in ASEAN with a score of 0 0.630. The enrollment rate in Vietnam has increased considerably in parallel with the education reforms that have been undertaken by the government. So the primary at primary education, the enrollment rate reached 97.3%, whereas in secondary education, it was 92.4% in 2018. Um, as well as pupil teacher ratio that also has increased because um, in recent years, the pupil teacher ratio has decreased into 21.8 um, in primary education and 18.6 in secondary education. Um, as a result of this improvement in the education sector, Vietnam has improved in terms of human development index because it has reached 0.704 in human development index in 2020, which has placed Vietnam in rank 118 in the world, which is a significant um, improvement from previous years. Um, in ASEAN, um, Vietnam's place in terms of um, human development index and education index can be seen in this um, table. So as you can see, um, Vietnam ranked seven in terms of human development index um, in ASEAN with score 0 0.704. And then in terms of education index, Vietnam also ranked seven 
because the score is 0 0.63. Vietnam, unfortunately, did not take part in the PISA, and PISA is a very, very important uh, measure for education for um, students in primary and secondary education. Other countries, um, such as Singapore, Malaysia, and Brunei Darussalam, they are performing well. So in the latest PISA, they were ranked first, second, and third. So Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar are, were among the countries that did not participate in the latest PISA in 2018. In terms of English proficiency scores, I have gathered some statistics that could demonstrate how Vietnam test takers uh, perform in recent years. In terms of total IBT, um, Vietnam um, score was 84, and that was in 2020. So 84, which places uh, Vietnam in the 50th per in percentile rank and fifth in ASEAN. In terms of IELTS, Vietnam's um, Academic score was 6.1 and general training score was 6.1 and these were in 2019 as well. And this scores placed Vietnam uh, fourth in ASEAN. In terms of EFEPI, which is English First, um, English Proficiency Index, um, Vietnam score was 473, which is categorized as low and this has placed the country in the rank of 65 and fourth in ASEAN. Now, as you can see here, this is how Vietnam fares in ASEAN in terms of TOEFL IBT and IELTS. So TOEFL IBT, that's, teach, um, that's test of English as a foreign language, um, and that's the computer-based TOEFL, whereas IELTS is the international English language testing system. As you can see, Vietnam is ranked fifth in ASEAN, in terms of TOEFL IBT, the score is 84, right? And the percentile rank is 50. Whereas in terms of IELTS, um, Vietnam is ranked fourth uh, for both categories of academic and general training IELTS. And the mean for that is 6.1, right? So Vietnam is ranked fourth. In terms of English proficiency score, Vietnam's um, EFEPI in 2020 um, was also ranked four, right? So here, as you can see, Vietnam's score was 473, and this is considered low um, in the categorization of EFEPI. Other countries that are doing better than Vietnam are Singapore, the Philippines, and Malaysia. And as you can see here, Singapore is number one in, in EFEPI. And it is also number one in TOEFL IBT, whereas in terms of IELTS, Malaysia is number one in ASEAN. Yeah. Other countries are from Vietnam's neighbors. For example, Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar, they do not perform better than Vietnam. So in a way, Vietnam performs better than its neighbors. Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar, as well as Indonesia. However, Vietnam still needs a lot to catch up in order to compete with Malaysia, the Philippines, and Singapore. So now, overall, in summary, we can see that Vietnam did not participate in the last PISA, which is in 2018. It shows better performance in terms of HDI and education index than some ASEAN nations but it lags behind others. And as you can see um, earlier, I have shown you that um, countries such as Malaysia and Singapore, they perform better than Vietnam in general. So overall, Vietnam is consistently in the middle table, right, in all English proficiency measures. So in terms of TOEFL IBT, in terms of IELTS, as well as in terms of English proficiency index. So Vietnam is in the middle table. It is fifth in TOEFL, fourth in IELTS, and then fourth in EFEPI. So this is how Vietnam in general um, performs in terms of English proficiency scores. Now, I would like to draw your attention to SB as an educational reform, which in the end will show you how it connects with the education measures and the English proficiency scores that I have discussed earlier. 
So first of all, we would like to see SB policies. SB policies in Vietnam have changed considerably in the last few, in the last um, decades. So the first thing noticeable about SB policy in Vietnam relates to the shift in language ideology. Language ideology shift has been apparent in Vietnam because in the past, French used to occupy the most privileged position in the mindset of Vietnamese people, right? Because um, Vietnam is a Francophone country. It used to be colonized by, by France. Okay, so in the past, French was the most prestigious language. However, English is now the most prestigious language in Vietnam. So English, the place of Vietnam has now been occupied by English because English is the most has the most privileged position in terms of linguistic hierarchy in Vietnam. And this was made apparent in the 1986 Doi Moi, which is the economic reform of Vietnam. The economic Economic reform amended ties with the West, so it opened space for English for the market-based economy. So the Vietnamese government wanted to uh, improve relations with, with the West, especially the United States. So for that reason, then the use of the need for English was really high and the need to teach English in schools was also very high. So for that reason, English was then made a compulsory subject in secondary schools. And then later on, about a decade later, there was a new policy to introduce compulsory foreign languages in primary schools. And in several years, the age to introduce foreign languages have been lowered down. So from age five, for example, to age three, and then um, to age, uh, yeah, to age three at the moment. And then um, in 1997, an interesting fact is that nearly 90, 75% of students at that time studied English, right? So 75% of students at that time studied English, which means three-fourths of the populations in Vietnam. And the two other languages that follow were Russian and French, okay? However, nowadays, 99% of students study English. So the situation has in, improved significantly in favor of English because within um, 20 years, right, uh, nearly 100% of students in uh, primary and secondary schools study English. English rather than other foreign languages. And then this is how English is um, presented in Vietnam's basic education curriculum. So as you can see here, Vietnam has got 12 years of basic education from primary, lower secondary to high schools, right? As you can see, um, grade one, um, grade two, grade three, grade four, and grade five, and then lower secondary from grade six to grade nine, and then high schools from grade 10 to grade 12. And interestingly in Vietnam, um, as you can see, um, SB or English is an optional subject, right? In the first two years, the there is no length of instruction and frequency of instruction for the first two years. However, I need to uh, tell you, and many of you would know this, that um, the compulsory subject here is for foreign languages, not English in particular. And in, in the literature, however, some scholars have mistaken this by saying that it is English that has been made compulsory in Vietnam. In fact, the, fault, the policy document says no, it is actually a foreign language and it is up to the schools to decide which foreign language to teach. And interestingly, as I said, based on recent statistics, 99% of students study English, which means that 99% of schools in Vietnam in primary and secondary level, at primary and secondary level, have chosen English as the uh, preferred foreign language to teach um, to their students. So for that reason, then now we have primary schools in Vietnam since grade three introducing English. And the way this has been done is that 35 or 40 minutes as the length of instruction for one lesson. And this, is, this has been done two to four times a week. And the same thing for grade four and grade five. 
in grades six to nine, we have um, 45 minutes of length of instruction and um, the lessons are done three times a week. And the same thing in high schools. As you can see here, um, the amount of exposure is not very high and this is um, expected because English here is a subject, not as a medium of instruction. So the circulating ideologies about English um, are in parallel with the introduction of the policy of English as a subject in basic education because of the fact that English has got so much prestige, it has surpassed Fran French, Russian, and Chinese. English is very important um, in globalization and in fact a lot of my um, respondents um, in Vietnam as well as in other countries have reiterated have reiterated the fact that English is the key to globalization. If you want to be able to compete globally, you cannot do it without English. And interestingly, English is no longer perceived at, as the language of imperialism, which happened in the past. So uh, for a few years, there used to be a circulating idea, a widespread assumption in Vietnam, as well as in other countries, that English is associated with the language of imperialism. However, this is no longer the case because many respondents have perceived English as a necessary language, as an important language that is needed for, global, for globalization, as well as to succeed um, in terms of science. So for that reason, English has, has got the function as the language of science. And this is very important because of the fact that Vietnam has got strong aspiration to reach industrialization. Vietnam, from my, um, based on data from my Vietnamese respondents, they said that the country aspired to become an industrialist country. And this cannot be done except with two keys. The first one is English and the second one is digitalization. So for that reason, English is, a, is instrumental for Vietnam in order to be able to reach an industrialist status within the next few years. Um, in relation to that, there is something very interesting about about English, about the way English as a subject in basic education is perceived in Vietnamese society. There are more positive ideological views about SB, SB here as in English as a subject in basic education, than EMI, which is English as a medium of instruction. So English as a medium of instruction was a policy that was introduced in Vietnam. It was an, a policy that was also so introduced in Indonesia and in Malaysia. In this country's EMI, um, English was used as a medium of instruction, as a language of instruction to teach maths and science, basically. So many schools and, and universities use English in order to teach uh, maths and science. However, the idea of using English as a, sub, uh, as a medium of instruction has become elitist because only people from the elite um, class uh, were able to, to afford EMI in many cases. And for that reason, then EMI was um, not um, guaranteeing equality for many reasons. So um, in, other, in, in the opposite, direction, um, SB guarantees equality for all because everybody can, accept, can access SB, can access English as a subject. As long as they attend basic education, then children can learn English. So for that reason, then SB is more egalitarian. SB guarantees equality for all citizens, for every children in Vietnam, for all children in Vietnam. Um, and then Another thing about SB is that SB policy perpetuates strong ideologies about English because in the way that English has been made a compulsory subject, then people in Vietnam more and more think of the importance of English. They more and more people think about the necessity to equip their children with skills in the English language. And then SB has also become part of national education policy in Vietnam because 
based on data from my uh, participants in Vietnam, they said that future education in Vietnam is going to be dual stream. So the dual stream of education delivery means that subjects will be taught in both Vietnamese and in English. And because of that reason, then there's a plan to put